Okay guys, so what you'll see when you first launch Unreal Engine uh, is you'll, well, you'll probably find that you'll be on the recent projects section um, and you'll have no recent projects because you've just started out. Um, but you know, as you create projects, uh, they will appear here and you can just double click them to run them. But to create a brand new project, we're gonna go to games um, and then you'll see these templates that you can start off with. Okay, and as beginners, I strongly recommend starting with the first person template. OK, because starting from blank, you know, you've got to implement all of those things initially, um, which is actually quite complicated. Um, so what we can do is start with the first person, which is going to give us the gun, the, the hands, the, the, the firing, the movement, uh, all that kind of thing already done for us um, that we can modify and edit uh, as we go through creating our game. Um, again, as a beginner, it's best to start with first person rather than something like third person, because um, with third person, you're going to have to create, uh, you know, a character. It's going to have to have all those animations and everything um, scripted in, and that's actually quite complicated stuff. So, if we stick with first person, again, as a beginner, it eliminates those more complex things uh, when we're just focusing on learning, you know, the software. So, next thing is to set a location to save your work. Um, Unreal isn't like, you know, you open up a Word document and you just save it somewhere. Uh, you actually have to save it to create it, it creates a project and actually creates a project folder. Okay, and then it will automatically creates all these subfolders within the folder um, where as you add assets into your game, like 3D models, images, whatever it might be, they automatically are saved within that project. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Um, you're gonna wanna give your project a name, something to remember. So I'm gonna call it my first game, something like that. Um, you'll probably notice that when you're typing uh, any names in Unreal, that if you have a space, it will tell you it doesn't like it. So you can't have spaces in your names within Unreal Engine. Um, Blueprint is where we're going to start. Um, if you already know C++ and something like that, then you, you probably want to start somewhere else. <laughs> um, but Blueprint um, is a great uh, visual scripting system that uh, includes all the sort of elements of traditional programming and, and for people that don't know programming it's also a brilliant place to to start learning it before jumping straight into the um, something like C++ is a, a very difficult programming language. Um, so the target platform we're building for is going to be desktop. Quality preset you can stick to maximum. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to include this starter content because that's going to give us some pre-made um, mainly the materials and things that we're going to be able to use uh, within our game. Ray tracing, we're going to leave off. This is our first game, you know, it's the graphics and things like that are not too much of a concern. Um, and we're using, you know, basic low poly models. So we don't worry too much about ray tracing. Um, and also, you know, if we wanted to add this later for some reason, uh, we can add it in later. So leave ray tracing off. And then go ahead and hit create. Okay, so once your project is loaded, you will see this kind of uh, little kind of arena space, if you like, which is built um, for you as the preset. Um, at this point, I would probably say I'm not going to go into every single fine beginner detail like the camera movement and everything like that in this video. If you've literally never used Unreal before, I would probably suggest I'll do a link in the description to like an absolute beginner's video that you can just go through um, first before you actually jump into a project like this um, with creating your first game. Okay, so for us, what we're going to do is I don't want any of this stuff here. Um, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, I'm going to leave some things behind that are important, like the lighting setup and stuff like that. Um, but just as a quick demo, when you do push play, obviously you can run around here and you can see the stuff that you have in the template. Um, and you can pick up the gun and you can fire it. And we're not going to worry too much about that, though, because we are going to be getting rid of this. So um, we're going to click and delete all of this stuff. Just be careful to, if I were to click over in that blue space there, notice that I've selected my sky sphere. If you ac accidentally do that and push delete, you're going to delete your sky sphere, which you don't want to do. So just be careful when you're doing this that you are just deleting the um, 3D models, um, this geometry, um, which is all, as you can see, split into pieces. 
So you have to carefully go through and delete everything. Technically, I know you could select everything probably quicker over there, but let's not worry too much. Okay, great. And what you want to leave behind is all of this stuff here, which is all set up for the you know the sky and the lighting and everything, which we want to keep. Um, don't worry about this weird little dragon head there. That just essentially is like the uh, the zero point of of the world, like x, y, and z zero. Um, so ignore that for now. And then you've got our player start. This is the spawn point of the character. So we can just leave that there for now. And then you obviously want to keep the, the gun. All right. But if we were to push play now, we would just fall into the abyss. You know, so we need a floor to get us started. And um, rather than have the floor that we had before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to landscape mode. All right, and this is going to allow us to create a landscape. So if we wanted to do some terrain and things like that later on, um, it gives us that option. So um, at this point, you want to select the select the section size. OK, so as a beginner, our first game, we don't need to go some, to something crazy like, you know, 255 or we probably don't even need 127. We probably don't even need 63 by 63. I'm going to start with 31 by 31. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can um, make that smaller later if we need to, but 31 by 31 is a, a safe starting point for, for creating our first game. Um, we don't really need to change anything else. You know, let's not worry about that for now. Um, that's a more advanced bits and bobs. So we're going to push create and it will just take a minute to create this landscape. It always takes longer the first time. Shouldn't take too long. All of this stuff, you know, how long these things take to process is going to depend on your your hardware of your PC. The one I'm using now is, is quite old, so. <laughs> Great, here we go. So as soon as that's created, you'll, you'll immediately see um, these uh, sculpting tools. We're not going to worry about that for now. Uh, um, we're just going to leave this as a flat surface. Um, we can come back to do some sculpting later. Um, again, I do have some videos on doing landscaping and how you can do that. So that can be for another video. But I'm just going to go up here and go back to select mode. And what you'll find is that your um, your player start and your rifle are kind of wedged in the ground. So the first thing you want to do is just get both of those. and Just lift them up so that that player start is above the ground. That's fine. And then just push play. And there we go. You'll see that you're now on this big open surface. I can still pick up my gun um, and I can look around. OK, so we kind of now have this this blank canvas that we want to work with. OK, so let's continue to get things set up. What we want to do now is import our 3D models. So I'm going to go to the content drawer over here. And the first thing I always do is do this dock in the layout so that this content draw stays here because it's very useful and you're going to be using it all the time and it's kind of a pain to be clicking on content draw all the time. Um, so this is where all your folders are where you can um, import and manage all of your game assets. So we've got a bunch of things here from the template, like the weapon, the arms, uh, some, some level prototyping tools and things. And we've got that starter content stuff. Um, we won't touch that just for now. I'm just going to go back to the main content folder. I'm going to right click and make a new folder. Um, and I'm going to call this uh, city models, right? I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to go over to import. And I'm going to go to where did I put it? It's on my desktop. My The model exports. And uh, city. Push open. Um, you'll get some settings for, for these. These are all just going to be um, meshes that don't have any like skeletons or anything within them. So we don't have to worry about any of these settings. Keeping it nice and simple and just push import all. And it will just take a, a minute or two to import. Uh, not even that. Um, 
So you'll get this error message and and uh, let's have a look, we'll look, quick look. So one of them is about smoothing groups. Um, essentially, when I created these models um, in the 3D software, you can apply uh, smoothing groups. And there's just one that I obviously forgot to do that on. Um, and yet, none of this is, is anything that we need to worry about, essentially. So I'm just going to clear that, close it down. Uh, and then what you'll see now, if I just lift this up, is you've got all of the 3D models. Okay. Um, there may be more than this when I actually release this, but anyway, now you have the 3D models, all the ones with the turquoise line underneath are the models. And then you have all the materials that come with those models. Okay. And the other materials have the green line underneath. So what you can do with these models, so if I get this archway, for example, just click and drag it and you can place it anywhere in your scene. Okay, push play to play my game and I can see um, the archway is there. Great, okay, so same with anything else, bring in one of these buildings here, um, we can see that. Um, when you bring in some of these buildings, so you'll see that you have this issue here, right? So with the 3D model, if I lift the 3D model up, you can see the 3D model itself has a floor to it. So if that is placed on exactly the same surface as our landscape floor, because those two surfaces are on exactly the same um, no, z-axis, they're kind of like fighting to be displayed on the screen, you know what I mean? So they need to be slightly offset in some way. So um, what we can do at this point is we can look at the snapping. So you notice that this is kind of snapping, kind of jumping. Um, we can turn this off and on. So this one is for movement snapping. If I click that, I can, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna lower this very slightly underneath. So the surface of the model floor is actually below the ground floor, unless you wanted to have a different material or something for the floor for this, in which case you could just have a tiny bit above. Okay, but I'm gonna just put it below and turn my snapping back on. Great, so then we don't have that issue anymore. Okay, so we've now got all these models which we can just use to create and build what we need to do. Um, trying to think what else we might need in there to get set up. Probably nothing to start building. Um, that's probably enough. Um, but one thing I will show you um, because you're gonna to wanna to do this as part of your play testing. When I push play, I'm going to pick up my gun a second. Notice that I should be able to walk into this building, right? But I can't. You'll also notice that with the archway, I can't walk through it. Okay, what that is, is that when you bring in the 3D models from an external uh, 3D modeling package, you need to set up the collision detection. So what I need to do to do that, so if I go to the archway as an example, if I double click it, what you can see is it opens that in its own separate window. All I need to do is very, very simple, is to scroll down here and change the collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. Okay, that's gonna use more complex collision detection rather than just a box around the whole thing. Save the changes I've made to it, push play, and now you can see that I can walk through the archway, but obviously it has collision detection on the bits that need it. So I'll do the same thing, I'll just do one more for this garage building, let's double click it. There's our model, um, scroll down here, collision complexity, change that to use complex collision as simple. Save it again. Let's just test that. There we go, I can walk in here now. Brilliant. Okay, so that will give you guys something to get started on. Um, what you can do now is just use what you have to create uh, a map of some kind. Um, what Some of the things I can just kind of show you, what, uh, we've got this wall piece here, uh, which is kind of useful for kind of um, sort of blocking bits off. So if I didn't want anyone to get behind this building, I can have like a wall there. Um, I could bring in the, the shop one, sort of hook that up to there. Um, so you can kind of see how, if I get another one of those walls, let's get that one, Control-C, Control-V, 
copy and paste that up there. Maybe get this station here. Sort of add that onto the end. Don't worry about where things go kind of intersecting. That's absolutely fine. As long as it looks right. Um, and then you can see that you can start of start to kind of build up like a street of um, these buildings. Um, again, notice that you've got the problem with this one. So just lower that down very, very slightly. Okay. And yeah, you've got more of the sort of finer details like um, this little kind of display thing here, which can go outside the shop. But these models, you can do whatever you want with them, really. And there's a pile of boxes there. <laughs> um, you've got some uh, like railing which you can control, paste, and sort of build on to create what you want with that. You've got these kind of monument things. Um, there's like a kind of like a dumpster thing here. All for low poly, simple models. Um, there's even this one, there's, there's a tree, which you might want to chuck somewhere. Okay, rotate it a bit maybe. But you get the idea and you can start to build your map with these models at this point. Okay, so yeah, once you've kind of built yourself a map within your space, if I zoom out, you can see how much space we have. Um, plenty of space to build something of, of a reasonable size. Okay, so just kind of be creative, have fun with that. And um, yeah, we'll go move on to the next one when you're ready.